So the other day I was just sitting at my desk and I looked over and my Ronin was just sitting there, almost like it was looking back at me, which made me think, what else can I do with this? So I took to the internet, hopped onto Google and searched cool things to do with my Ronin S. And after a bit of digging, this is what I came up with. Now I didn't just want to give you the typical YouTuber gimbal tips like put it in roll mode and do a parallax pan around somebody because those are boring in my opinion and don't really show off the cool features of the gimbal. So I came up with some potentially more practical ways to use your gimbal that hopefully will help you out. These will work for both the brand new DJI Ronin S2 as well as the original one which I will be using in this video. Now the first feature we're going to be checking out is called Active Track. Basically what it allows you to do is to track a subject up, down, left, right, wherever they go in frame. Now if you have the brand new RS2 you'll be able to do this without even using your phone just by plugging in your Ronin to your camera but if you're still rocking the original like I am then you'll have to use your phone and mount it on top of the gimbal like I have here. Now connect your phone to the app, click on create and click active track. Tap on the subject you want to shoot and get shooting. So as you can see it works pretty well. It is tracking me around the room. Even if I move really quickly it does catch up and kind of guess where I will be if I'm out of frame which is pretty cool. I mean I'm assuming the new active track 3.0 on the RS2 works even better but this is pretty great if you're trying to film yourself. In terms of practical applications of using this obviously I could see you using it to film yourself if you're walking around the room, it can track you just fine. But in terms of a professional use case, another idea I had was using it for ski follow cams. This would be a much more practical use for it if I could just tap on the skier and then ski in front of them and point it backwards and not even have to look at what I'm shooting or even forwards when you're moving forwards and you're trying to focus on skiing and not crash. Hopefully that would be super helpful assuming the active track is able to track them through the trees and on whatever run they're skiing. Now I'm a little afraid to try this with my phone just attached on top of the camera, but with the RS2 it would be a lot easier to give this a go. Especially since I'm already risking my camera and gimbal by skiing with it, so... Who knows? Now the second feature I tested today is called Force Mobile. It basically allows you to use a similar mimic system to what Freefly has on the Movi Pro if you've seen that. Essentially what you do is mount your phone onto a fluid head tripod and as you pan up, down, left, right, the gimbal will mimic actions that you're taking on the tripod with your phone mounted on it. Now this is super cool because it just uses the accelerometer within your cell phone itself which isn't exactly built for this, so it doesn't always work 100% of the time, but when it does, it's a super sweet feature, and if you're shooting in a professional setting, like maybe the gimbal is hanging off a, the side of a car, and you wanna operate from the side of the road or something, and you can just look at the shot, and you have a wireless monitoring system, then you can just pan up, down, left, right, as you see fit for the shot, and get whatever you need to get with that. Now all you need to do to set this up is put your phone on a tripod, preferably a fluid head will work a lot better. Hop into the app, click on create and click force mobile. Now if you're rocking the RS2, you'll not only be able to control the gimbal movement itself, but you'll also be able to wirelessly view what you're shooting on your phone at the same time as you control it through the Raven Eye system that DJI has introduced with the RS2. But if you're rocking the old school one like I am still, you'll just monitor it on the actual display itself while it's working or have a wireless, separate wireless video system that allows you to see what you're shooting. Either way, the setup is the exact same and it's super easy to get going. Now while I found this setup to work pretty well most of the time, there was a bit of shift in accuracy when you would do super quick pans or tilts. Um, I found the lag would kind of set in and the gimbal would not be able to keep up and then you would be a little off axis of where you started. Fortunately, there is a reset button. You can just tap right in the menus there to reset it to wherever you are um, on your tripod with your cell phone, but it's not a perfect system. Again, this is super budget stuff, so don't expect it to be absolutely perfect. That may also partially be because I tested this on an iPhone 6S, which is a super old phone. So if you guys have better results with newer phones, definitely let me know in the comments below. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you click the like button down below. It does actually make a difference. And while you're at it, subscribe if you want to see more filmmaking videos. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.